welcome to you all on this lovely day. So, <coughs> nice to see the band here today as well. You made quite a difference. So, we'll start with the opening prayer after a short silence. <coughs> Accept, O God, the worship of our hearts and of our lips, and give us grace to glorify you in our lives. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Please sit for our opening prayer. We meet in the presence of Jesus and we open our hearts and lives to him as we say together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. We come to meet with Jesus to know his forgiveness and his renewal as we sing our responses for him to set us once again on the right path. We have not always worshipped God our Creator. Lord, have mercy.
Jesus says, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his Spirit and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The common prayer for today, the fourth Sunday before Advent. God of glory, touch our lips with the fire of your Spirit, that with all creation we may rejoice to sing your praise through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And we hear our first Bible reading. <clears throat> The lesson is taken from Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 1 to 9. These are the commands, decrees, and laws your God directed me to teach you, to observe in the land that you are crossing the Jordan to possess, so that you, your children, and their children after them, may fear the Lord your God as long as you live by keeping all his decrees and commands that I give you and so that you may enjoy long life. Hear Israel and be careful to obey so that it may go well with you and that you may increase greatly in a land flowing with milk and honey just as the Lord the God of your ancestors promised you. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God. The Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you. Angela. Love the Lord your God. We stand to sing our second hymn, Let There Be Love Shared Among Us.
understanding, hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. One of the scribes came near and heard Jesus and the religious authorities disputing with one another. And seeing that Jesus answered them well, he asked him, Which commandment is the first of all? Jesus answered, The first is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, You shall love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Then the scribe said to him, You are right, teacher. You have truly said that he is one, and besides him there is no other. And to love him with all the heart, and with all the understanding, and with all the strength, and to love one's neighbour as oneself, this is much more important than all whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he answered wisely, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. And after that, no one dared to ask him any question. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Be seated, everyone. Let's bow our heads to pray. Dear Lord, we ask you to open our eyes and our minds that we may see wonderful things in your word and that in the written word we might meet with you, Jesus, who is the living word. Amen. Love and marriage, love and marriage, go together like a horse and carriage. This I tell you, brother, you can't have one without the other. Now that song is from 1955, and it, these days it might sound quite outdated or even debated some 69 years later. You can't have one without the other. Some people might question that. And equally debated might be Jesus' words in today's Gospel. The most basic of commandments, if you want to forget everything else, the most basic thing is love God and love your neighbour. You can't have one without the other, as the song says. And Jesus, in answer to the scribe's question, deliberately combines two separate verses from two separate sources. Deuteronomy, which we heard this morning, all about loving God with everything you've got. But then Jesus also brings a verse from Leviticus, which says, love your neighbour as yourself. Jesus puts them both together. You can't have one without the other. Well, like the love and marriage song, that might be questioned today. A humanist, France, for instance, might argue you can love your neighbour without loving God because the question whether there is a God uh, anyway, the important thing is love your neighbour. You don't need God to be involved in it. But for those of us who try to follow Jesus, the command is clear. You can't say you love God unless you're also showing that same love to your neighbour. Your neighbour is made in God's image, so that's why you should love them. However, from an atheist point of view, if your fellow human is just a product of evolution, a random collection of genes and such like, then, as our newspapers and world events show, if human beings are just chance collection of molecules, in the end, there isn't much love and there aren't many neighbours. We are commanded to love God with all of our heart, soul, mind and strength. Our faith shouldn't just be an intellectual exercise. Simon Jenkins, a journalist and author, 
he's an authority on and he loves churches and cathedrals I've got books by him but he's not a believer and many composers of beautiful and inspiring church music may not always be signed up followers of Jesus the priority is to love God to love God and to worship him and to follow him to love him with everything we've got our mind our feelings our attitudes our words and our actions above all to love him in last week's Times magazine there was an article about Shabana Mahmood who is the first Muslim Justice Secretary and an MP for Ladywood in Birmingham and in the article in talking about her Muslim faith she said my faith is the core of who I am it is the part of me that remains when all else is gone I would see it as a central truth of who I am as a person wonderful words and can we say the same words about our love for God you see everything to us everything to us and Jesus tells us to show our love for God in the way that we love our neighbor the command is love your neighbor as yourself it doesn't mean loving your neighbor instead of yourself but showing our neighbour the same love and respect and care that we show for ourselves. Love God and love your neighbour. You can't have one without the other. Dire Straits have got a song which contains the lyrics, philosophy is useless, theology is worse. <laughs> theology worse, you know, some of us who have studied it might, might agree, but... If our faith doesn't show itself in love, then actually that theology is useless. Now, our daughter surprised me the other week. She said, in a sort of general discussion about religion and stuff, she said, I'll always remember one thing you said, Dad. And I held my breath and wondered what it was. <laughs> and she said, you once said, there's a difference between faith and religion. There's a difference between faith and religion. And I thought, did I say that? It's quite profound. I must have nicked it from somewhere. <laughs> but the scribe sees that. There's a difference between faith and religion. Love for God and love for neighbour is much more important than sacrifices, rituals, and all the rest of the paraphernalia of religion. Love for God and love for neighbour is the most important thing. Finally though, these words are about commands. Loving God and loving neighbour. And we might think, well how on earth can you be commanded to love? How can you be commanded to love? Surely love is about those wonderful feelings which sweep over us. Well that's the kind of love from songs and romance novels. Actually, at its base, love is a matter of choice, something that happens in our head rather than just in our hearts and our emotions. And in loving God and loving our neighbour, we choose to put God and others first. An active choice. Okay, well that's a tall order. Where on earth do you get that kind of love from? How can I, an impatient prejudiced, chip on his shoulder, white bloke, possibly love like that. Where can I get that love from? It's when we draw that love from God, partly why we're here this morning. God's love is like a reservoir where we start to receive his love and then begin to return that love to others. In John's first letter it says, we love because he first loved us. Receive his love and pass it on. And Paul writes in Romans 5, 5, God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. So like a reservoir, God's love is to come into our hearts and refresh us and we are to 
pass it on, to pour it out. And we see the truth of that in a way with children. A child who knows that they are loved faces the world with confidence and trust. The child is unsure whether they're loved or not or has to constantly earn that love, finds it difficult to trust the world around them and to show love. When we know deep down in the very depths of our being that God loves us with all our faults and failings and difficulties, then we can love him in return and love other children. Love, love God and love your neighbour. We are asked in these days to be missional as a church. Don't just to be here in a nice um, uh, holy huddle, nice though it is. We are to be missional, to spread that love around. And somebody was once asked, what is the mission of the church? What is the mission of the church? And the person said, well, the answer is to look at those fairy tales. When a frog is kissed by a prince and turns into a princess. They said, that's the mission of the church, to go out and kiss frogs. <laughs> and love God and love your neighbour so that frogs are transformed. God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Love God with all your heart with all your soul, with all your might, and your neighbour as yourself. Lord and Father, whose love throws, flows through us like a river, sweep away those barriers which obstruct the flow, that we might receive your love, give your love free passage through our lives, and on to others. In your name we pray. Amen. <laughs> So let us renew our faith and trust and love for God and neighbour as we stand to affirm our faith. Let us affirm our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please sit now for our prayers of intercession. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for the example of the saints, particularly our own saints. Michael, leader of the angels. Please help us to follow in their footsteps in worshipping you and in seeking your will in all things. We pray for modern day saints who show your love through works of charity and self-sacrifice. Please encourage them and continue to be alongside them. We pray for your church and for strength and inspiration for our clergy, Nick, Simon, Paul and Roger. Please help them to continue to guide us through our spiritual and worldly journey. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for peace and unity throughout the world. For all world leaders, that they will continue to seek an end to the war and violence prevailing today, particularly in the Ukraine 
Gaza and Lebanon. Please bring an end to injustice, inequality, hatred and prejudice and bring hope and healing in place of despair and helplessness. We ask you to be with hostages and refugees and the displaced. Please comfort all those who have been affected by bereavement, homelessness, disease and fear. Strengthen them and give them genuine trust in your goodness. We ask for integrity and honesty within our own government, that they will make wise decisions which will enhance the lives of all our citizens, particularly those living in poverty and desolation. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Lord, our hearts go out to the people of Spain, whose lives have been completely devastated by the severe flooding, causing dreadful loss of life and livelihood. We don't understand why these terrible things happen, but know that climate change of our own making has played a part in worsening the situation. We desperately need a solution to this problem and ask that countries like America, China and India, who refuse to acknowledge this, will now reconsider their stance and join the rest of the world in trying to rectify the problem before it is too late. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those suffering in mind, body or spirit. For all who are ill at home or in hospitals or care homes. In our church we pray for Evelyn, Mary, Hazel, Sarah and James, Jean and Sam. And in a moment of quiet we pray for those known to ourselves. May your strength and hope be known to them and all who care for them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask you to be with the family and friends of those who have died recently, particularly Pat Bass, David Slade, Michael Davis and Joe Forrest. Lord, you know the pain and sorrow caused by bereavement. May they experience the comfort of your Holy Spirit within them and know the hope of your eternal glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember with love those whose anniversary of death occurs at this time. Margaret Williams, Diana Bennett, Millie Mabry, Brian Clayton, and Lynn Fellows. Lord, in your mercy, hear us. Lord, may we reflect your love in all that we do and say, and spread your message of salvation and grace to those we encounter. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, hear our prayers. Hear our
Thank you again, Angela. Please stand for the peace. <laughs> fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, kindness, faithfulness, and self-control. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of his peace. <laughs>
that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms to the Lord upon the cross and made the Lord the perfect sacrifice for sin. And the night he was betrayed at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death, and celebrate his rising in glory. Send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ our risen Lord. And with your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven.
Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. Lord, we have broken your bread and received your life. By the power of your Spirit, keep us always in your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We stand to sing our final hymn, Love Divine, All Loves Excellent.
could do with another volunteer to be a server. So, <clears throat> if anybody would like to think about that, or find out a bit more, have a word with Simon. Oh, you want to talk? Please. <clears throat> Actually, just a quickie. This week, Thursday, PM, 2 o'clock till 4 o'clock, St Michael's Chapel, tea, coffee, cake. You're all welcome for a good chat together. Thank you. Thanks, Paul. Thanks, Simon. Uh, you, there are a couple of things coming up soon to help us to uh, explore and get uh, more out of the journey of Advent. One is being advertised on these flyers, which are around at church today, there are some on the table, and that is the quiet morning that's being led by Suzette Maguire at St Alfred's Church on the morning of Saturday the 23rd of November, so that's just before Advent starts, to help us to prepare. There's also going to be an event happening uh, on four Wednesdays in the chapel through Advent, uh, which isn't advertised on here, but I have got some publicity about that to give out next week. That's uh, going to be um, a chance to explore Advent through artwork, through um, probably through famous paintings uh, and reflection, and that will be in the chapel on Wednesday afternoons uh, from the last Wednesday of November and then the first three Wednesdays of December. Uh, all the details will be on the, uh, the sheet that I'll give out next week. Uh, and the details of both of those things are also in the editorial of this month's parish news, which, which I wrote uh, about preparation for our event. Uh, so do think about going to the quiet morning. The details there about how to let you know that you're coming are on that sheet. Thanks, Alan. Right, one more notice. There's some flyers out on the on the table. This one is for Surly Hill Symphony Orchestra, uh, an event on the 23rd of November, which is a Saturday. So, do have a look at that. You can get tickets from me cheaper. Like <laughs> <you. laughs> Thank you, <laughs> Last but not least, um, <clears throat> at the end of the service, could you stay seated in your seats for a little bit? Because we've got the draw. <clears throat> so that'll be taking place once the priests have left. <clears throat> Otherwise, that's it for me. Keith, parish news. Oh, yes. Thank you, Linda. <laughs> the new parish news is out. And it's on the table. And there's only a few left. Do grab one if you haven't already got one. Thank you. Please stand for God's blessing. The Lord bless you and watch over you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look kindly on you and give you peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the, the name, name of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen.